Hi, I, I'm Nabil. I graduated uh, in dentistry last year in October. And yeah, I was in the Medical University of Sofia. And yeah, I've just moved back now, uh, back to Manchester in the United Kingdom, that's where I'm from. I did apply in England and I had an offer there, but um, I didn't make it by a grade. I missed out by one grade. So it was either like, I either stay there, uh, and do another degree in something else, or I take a year out, repeat the subject, obviously, which I didn't get the good grade in and um, reapply. Um, and then I discovered like Bulgaria, I'd heard of it. And then one of my friends in uh, high school uh, he knew someone who was in, just graduated from Sofia as well, in the year above uh, me, and uh, put the two of us together. And then I started speaking to him, and then uh, he told me he was here. He was in his first year at the time, and yeah, we got talking about what it was like here. And I asked him all the questions like you do. Um, and um, yeah, once I spoke to him, he put me in touch with Intex. So um, and then I spoke to Demeter and and, and, and yourself as well, and. Um, yeah, I ended up getting a better idea of it and then yeah, just went for it and I'm a doctor. <laughs> so it worked out in the end. <laughs> there was a few good professors I really looked up to, um, especially as sort of time had went on in the university and we were more in the dental building. Um, <clears throat> like one of my professors, Dilla Verska, who is one of the oral maxillofacial surgeon, uh, was, she was a fantastic at her job and she was really, really good. She had loads of knowledge, she really wanted to teach all of us and she enjoyed that aspect of it and we enjoyed because we could engage with her very well and, um, you know, she really made it, um, I know she was a specialist in a lot of different things that only she could do and that was really inspiring because you know, you're learning from the best of the best in the country and that, that's you, you want to almost do well for them kind of thing. It's like you want to not just impress them, but you also have a duty like, you know, that they are looking out for you. So you want to do well to, for them as well. You don't want to let them down by not preparing for that lesson or test or, you know, especially when I first started working extractions was the was the thing I was weakest at because I was just you know the anesthesia and, and that kind of thing it's all well and good learning the theory behind it but when you actually got to do it you're like uh, uh. And <laughs> so it, it's, it's one of them it, it was tough and like I said she was really helpful and patient with me and taught me some good tips and and, and skills that she learned and and um, yeah and now that's like it's the thing that I'm so I enjoy the most of the extraction and oral surgery side so that is very inspiring and it's something that maybe down the line, maybe I could look into specialising in it's from professors like that. The most useful um, subject I would say, uh, to be honest, I, I don't think there was one I could say that there was, and that's not trying to be your, it's just like, they're all, why, why I really enjoyed was, and what I'm finding out now is because is, is you don't know unless when, until you finish and go home, just how well that you're prepared at university. Because you're always wondering, it's natural because I did the same thing. You do wonder, well, is it, is it good for me? You know, am I, what am I learning here? Is it just like, is this how they just do it in Bulgaria? Will it transcend to when I go back to England? Is it going to be completely different? Do I have to relearn stuff? But you actually realise how well prepared you were in every discipline. And I feel that across the board, whether it's with extractions, whether it was with fillings or, you know, root, uh, endodontic treatment with rotary instruments, it's not very different to how it is back home for me. Uh, in fact, some of the one or two of the ways we did things here was maybe a bit, I did one or two procedures here that I wouldn't have done in university, uh, particularly say in paediatrics, you know, you've got direct pulp capping, indirect pulp capping on paediatric patients isn't something you'd really do. Uh, in England, you mainly do mainly just normal fillings on children and those kind of things. So, you know, there's certain things I have done here that maybe I wouldn't have got the opportunity to do there. And I feel across the board, I've been well prepared. Um, I don't really feel like there's one. I feel like they were all pretty much prepared as well. What I miss about Bulgaria, um, I do miss like, having my own place like all the students here were living renting out private apartments and especially where i was staying in manastesky levadi was big uh, student like population there like lots of us moved over there 
and then it was just nice because all my friends were like two minutes away, one minute away. So we were all very local to each other. We could all go to each other's apartment, spend time with each other. And it builds that sort of family feel. So obviously you are away from home, but you're not really away from home. You know, it's like a home away from home. And that's why we made it. And it was a nice area, very family friendly area. And that aspect of things I really do miss because it was sort of nice to have that um, aspect of it with all your friends so close by um, the weather. I actually do miss it because if you've ever been to Manchester, you know it's raining like 99% of the time. It's cold. Even in the summer, it's cold. So uh, I do definitely miss the weather here, especially in the summer. It's really, really nice. We go down Vitosha, you know, after uni or the weekends, or you go down to another place in Bulgaria. You can always get a car. And, like, you know, we'd make these last minute plans, and it was always fun. You go down to another city, Plovdiv, or you go down to the coast in Varna. I miss that aspect of it. It is a lot of adventure and that stuff. So yeah, definitely miss that. I think what I would do differently, definitely, is I'd be a bit more, a bit more organised with some of the subjects and stuff when I started. I think it was very. Um, I just sort of took it as it came initially. I didn't prepare myself as such for. Um, like some of the exams and the way I could have prepared a bit more I think I think I just sort of took things um, as they came and I think if I'd prepared a lot earlier and sort of got myself a lot more um, you know in terms of notes and, and revision and, and, and that sort of things I think it would have been a lot smoother for me I didn't put what you know what I mean I wouldn't put myself in certain situations where I put myself under a lot of pressure like needing to pass this exam because the first time I didn't try as hard, I didn't balance my stuff. But then I guess at the same time, that's what, that's kind of, you figure that out as you go along throughout the six years. It's very, that's dental school, that's medical school. It is your first year, of course. So yeah, I definitely think that that is what I would do differently. I'd say what I would do differently in sixth year is I would probably, the, 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 beauty, with, the beauty with sixth year compared to your five years here is that in your five years, you've got your seminars in order to do your work. So it's like if you had, in fifth year, if you had maxillofacial on surgery on Monday at eight o'clock, you knew that was your time slot to get a patient in for an extraction. You had to, that was your only slot for the week. So you knew that that's the only time I've got, it's hard to get extra lessons and those kind of things. Whereas with sixth year, the rooms are always sort of open. You just had to book yourself in kind of like how it is in real life and you book a patient in. It was kind of like that. And I think what happened was a bit when I started sixth year, um, especially because I had one or two resets in fifth year to do, I kind of relaxed a bit at the start. And I was like, eh, it's, yeah, it's okay. I'll book in a, a few things. Or, it's okay. I'll wait a bit. I'll, I'll chill. I'll, I'll do other things and I'll prepare for this or I'll, I'll do something else. I won't prioritize this subject or this patient uh you know like whatever and then maybe and then i think i left it a bit but i did leave it a bit too late with one or two things and then um yeah then you just put pressure on yourself so definitely i think start early in terms of your patient work i think that's the main thing definitely just as soon as you can because it's a lot quieter at the start as the year progresses and it's coming now to the end people are rushing to get everything in the chairs are full professors are now busy everything the supplies you know nurses are everywhere so you, it's hard to get the supplies you need so definitely i would say once you i think it is a thing initially you're like oh it's okay i can i've got till march or april to finish everything off but i'd say start early and in that way the sort of the quicker you can get it done as well you've got your states coming up in march or april um you can as quicker you can finish up with your patient work and, and that side of things your treatment plans you can start revising for your state exams the more time you gave yourself and that's the that's the thing that I should have done because I didn't then because I had to go so far into the sixth year to finish stuff I then comp compromised myself in terms of revising for my state so definitely I would say get ahead of things as soon as it starts in terms of patient work I think that's definitely something I do differently. I think with the medical dental profession, I think you really got to have a love and a passion for it because it is really long and, and it is quite tough at times. It's not all plain sailing and you know, I breeze through five, six years. It's not like that. There's going to be times where you're really under the cosh, you're really in a position where you don't feel like you're going to 
make it or you're just so stressed and there's other things going on and it's that keeping that image in your head of what you see you what you envision yourself being after you finish that graduate being at that graduation having that diploma having that graduation cap on you know keeping those moments in there that drove me on and I think if you don't have that fire and desire and that passion in my experience I think that's what carries people through into being a dentist and a very good dentist or doctor I think you need to have that love for it and I think if you don't have that and then I just don't think it's for you it's like anything I guess in life but I think more so for this because it is a lot of dedication you know if you're coming here at 18 years old and you're doing a six-year degree you know it's a like, you know come as finish it and say 24 for example that's what, a quarter of your life big chunk of your life is spent dedicated to this so if you don't love what you do and you don't have that passion for it you, it's, you won't last so if it's something that you think eh it's okay I don't think it's something you should do I think you should really want to do it and really have that passion because that's what's going to carry you through the hard times every patient is very different and there's obviously gives a lot of difficulties and some rewards at times. I've had really good patients that have been you know, always there and the open communication. I've had patients where they don't show up at crucial times when I've needed them to. Sometimes, you know, I've, and you've got limited time and they don't come and they don't give a reason. In university that's happened and, you know, it's very difficult because <clears throat> they've given you their word and you've prepared and, and done all of this and that and then they don't show up and it just puts you under more stress. So, you know, that's a difficulty there, definitely. So the university did start something in our year, last year, where they had um, an, an office on the ground floor of the dental floor where patients that <clears throat> come in directly uh, from the university would go for a checkup in this room. One of the assistants or assistant professors will uh, check them in and see what they need, take their particulars, and then uh, you as students can go into the office and then if they've got the patient for you, I can say, hey, I need a, an extraction. Is there any extraction patients? Yeah, this guy came in, this is his name, number, he needs maybe this tooth, this tooth. And that was easier because students, we were struggling, especially post COVID, to get the patients in. And obviously, with the fourth years and the fifth years also needing patients as well, you need, you know what I mean? There's, there's um, a lot of, <laughs> everyone needs to find their patients. So it's a good way of sort of organizing it. and. Um, it was, yeah, it, was, it, it did help. I did get a few patients from there and it, that, was, that was a big help as well. So, yeah, they are, it's slowly changing as well. It's making it a bit easier, which is, which is good. Pediatric patients can be difficult, of course, and the kids. Kids won't be so fond of dentists. Um, the jumping about and it's sort of engaging them. And I think that was probably for me the biggest uh, difficulty I had. But it was a fun one because it's always like, you're thinking, how can I how can I get them to engage with it and how can I get them to, you know, sit in the chair and, and, and allow me to even just do this checkup right now. And you sort of, you know, you can go home and you can research different techniques and those kind of things, like distraction techniques and these kind of things. And it just aids you as a dentist because then you're able to take on a whole different array of uh, patients. Some can be very anxious you know, needle anxious, you know, an injection or just dental phobia because it's very prevalent. And um, yeah, I think definitely it's, it's dealing with that. It can be tough. You need to be very calm, very patient. If it's late afternoon and you're tired and they're tired, it's like a Thursday afternoon or Friday afternoon, you know everyone's tired, it's the end of the week. You still need to keep that professionality and that same composure that you would at the start on a, on a Monday. So can be difficult, um, but it's just learning with that. Six years of your life and it needs a lot of dedication from first year through to sixth year. There's no easy way out. You have to hit your targets, you have to do this, you have to pass your exams. And, and it is a big stress, especially when you're here and you know it's, you know, it's a big um, investment. You know, your family, your parents may be putting into you here. So there's a lot of stress attached to it as well. And yeah, there were times, especially in the middle of my degree, um, I just was really burnt out. And you just wake up when you just don't feel like, I can't do this. It's like, I don't want to revise. But it's not because I, I don't want to pass, I just can't physically, or something bad happened and you're just like, 
okay and it's it can be a bit <laughs> a bit worrying at times it was a bit and I, I was like you do get a little bit of burnt out um so but that's that's the degree that's that's how it is and anyone will tell you anywhere it's not a bulgarian thing it's not you know it's a medical dental degree whether you're doing it here whether you're in any corner of the world it's a tough degree you know that when you're coming into it and that's as much as you get the highs of the degree where you treat a patient for example and they're really happy with the treatment and they're super happy and sometimes they you know they're they're like you've really helped me and I couldn't find anyone and, you know that's those high moments or when you've passed that exam you you know those kind of things it also comes with the lows when it's not going your way and it's just sort of just keeping the faith put your head down keep working on just keep moving things will find its course and you'll you'll figure it out majority of the people did make it um it's tough of course it's tough there are times where you're on the ropes it does look like it's over. <laughs> You're on that last chance, maybe for that exam. We've, we've all been there, myself included. But you know, we've all managed to pull through, find a way, and, and uh, learn from whatever mistakes we've made in the past, and uh, be better versions of ourselves going forward, more prepared, more aware of, of things. And uh, yeah, it's nice to see that we've all made it. In my sort of limited experience, I do find what makes a good dentist, I think a lot of it is communication. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you need your patients to trust you and you need to sort of see how you're gonna approach different, everyone's different. You're gonna see different people walking with different personalities. Some are gonna be very scared of the dentist. Some are gonna be super excited. You're gonna have kids, you're gonna have you know the elderly. You need to tailor your personality and tailor your communication to fit exactly each and every person that walks into your surgery. So much so that the people that need loads of reassurance, you are reassuring them, you're giving them all the proper information. And those that don't need it and just sort of want to get in and get out, you're being efficient with it. You're not boring them with loads of detail so that they lose interest or they think, oh, he's just trying to sell me this uh, treatment because it makes him money. No, you're actually explaining this is this option, this is this option, this is why I would go with this option. That's, uh, for me, I think is the biggest thing of what makes a good dentist is just really good communication. And that takes time to learn. It's not something that you, you know, some people, yeah, it comes naturally to others. Some people have the, that ability to just talk and talk. It's funny, I think when I first came here as well, I was quite shy and I didn't say too much and I didn't do a lot of that. But as time's gone on, I've sort of opened up a little bit more and more. Um, you have to if you want to be a dentist. It won't work, I don't think, if you're too quiet and reserved because it's not, it's a very, it's an interpersonal job. You're dealing with people every single day, 20 to 30 a day. And in some cases, you know, you need to be open and, and, and have that ability to co con converse and, <clears throat> and empathize and all these things and be open, especially when you're discussing treatment and all these things. You need to be as open, honest, and thorough as you can for not just their benefit, but for yours as well. Just so you let them know of everything that's gone on. So it is something that you work on uh, throughout life. And uh, I do feel that it's something I've worked on a lot throughout my time. Um, and I think I'm a lot better right now. I think I can still do a lot better, but that's, that's fun. I like that, I'd always like to, push myself and uh, become even better. I think I'm a lot more um, decisive with things. Um, you, I maybe was very bit indecisive with how I'd go about doing things and you know you need to set yourself a proper plan, a proper target um, and the way you want to go about something and when you have that belief and you make that decision it makes things a lot easier and it sort of shows that personality of he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's talking about you're not talking and questioning yourself like oh you know I might do I might have to do a filling I might have to it's like no I, I might looking at this diagnose looking at this x-ray I think I, I, I'm in my opinion my best solution for this would be this and you can discuss that with the patient with the doctor uh, professor and they appreciate it a lot more when you come to them with a solution rather than coming to them and going I don't know what to do if you go to them and say, I've looked at this, I've diagnosed this, I think it's this, this is why I think it's this, and this is why I think I should do it like this, you'll find that they'll be way more 
receptive to helping you and that's not because they don't want to help you, it's because they want you to think for yourself. That's how it is. It's like you're going to be the dentist one day, they're going to sit in your chair and then, you know, no one's going to be there so you need to make that decision. So if you're indecisive, not only is the patient going to think this guy doesn't know, he doesn't trust himself, he doesn't know what he's doing. But do you know, so it's it's one of them. So I think decisiveness is definitely something I've, I've also learned because you want to come up with an idea. And so it's not always like it's the right thing. You know, you say this and I'll discuss it, for example, with a professor and he'd be like, no, it, it's not right. It should be this. And OK, well, that's fine. That's, that's life. That's how you learn things. But they respect that you were able to do it yourself and, and make that decision and come to it and actually engage and, and take initiative. Um, so yeah, definitely something that's more I've worked on. Honestly, I think for starting first years, um, enjoy it. First of all, I know it's a big, uh, it's a big change um, leaving home, especially if you come from like you know if you're in England or whatever. It's right across the continent, so it's a big change. I know, I know now that there's a lot more. Uh, kids coming straight out of high school and college, 17, 18, 19 years old coming here like I was. When I did that, there wasn't so many. A lot of people had been to uni in England or did a year or two, dropped out and then came. So they were a bit more old, a bit more mature. Um, for me, I came straight out. So it was, you know, I, I can understand what it's like to be 18, 19, having not left, lived, left home before and then starting off in a completely new country where you don't know the language, you don't know the culture. It can be very overwhelming, but just take your time with it. Um, try your best to learn the language, I would say, because it really does help you when you start working with patients. And that's for medics as well as dentists, because you need it. And also you're going to live in this country. Um, and yeah, I think if you can get on top of that, and it's hard language to learn, I know, but you can, if you make an effort for it, it'll definitely aid you when you start the later years when you're working clinically, because it'll become a lot easier to find the patients and communicate with them. and and that side of things, I think is a big thing. And just be, stay prepared. Um, it's very easy in the first year or two to just sort of take your foot off the gas and relax a bit. And think, oh yeah, it gets tougher later on, but now I can chill, but just, um, yeah, find a balance, I would say. Don't stay just revising all the time. Go out with your friends. I think what's cool now with the university maybe different from when I started is they've made loads of little communities and societies with things now. There's events that are always happening and if it's like a social event in the evenings or whatever nights out or if it's like clubs you know football or you know cricket we've introduced here in the country which we've that's something I've been a part of as well which is really really nice to bring a sport that isn't very big here um, and for all of us to come and play and then be recognized as the university's team and then be a part of you know, we actually had had tournaments with the other other universities and even played like the national team. And I know some friends of mine who are medics are playing for the national team themselves now and to just sort of see where we were now. You know what I mean? That kind of thing like that is just like find a passion project, but something you enjoy doing and you can always find. And when you have that on top of your studies, you'll enjoy the experience a lot more. If you just stay and study all the time, you'll just you know, you probably won't enjoy it. So definitely take advantage of where you are, enjoy it, embrace the culture, travel, and uh, get a good balance. I can't think of anything that I regret right now. You know is I don't work like that because I just kind of feel what happens, happens. We make mistakes. I've messed up on things loads of times. I can't think of specifics, but I'm sure I have. And at the time, like, oh, why did I do this? But that's just life. You, you learn and you only learn from making mistakes. So I can't say really I've regretted anything. I've done stupid things, but uh, nothing that you learn from that and you become better from it. I would say just make a CV once you're finished, you know, brush it up, make it professional, get on the job sites. And there's loads of jobs that will be hiring dentists. It's a, it's a high need job, you know, medics, dentists. It's not, that's the good thing for us. We struggle, yes, for six years, but there's always a job at the end of it for us because you know we're high need, we're a necessity in society. So just put yourself out there, get yourself in, and just enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. It's fun. I just I enjoy it because I like networking with different people. So I like going. I've enjoyed going to different interviews and seeing what I like and what I don't like in a company or, or a practice.
So the state exams are very similar to, well this is dentistry so I did, it, I, medics is obviously different but with, um, you, you do your five, in sixth year, sorry in your fifth year you do your six uh, clinical exams, you know, periodontology, conservative dentistry, maxillofacial surgery, prosthetics, pediatrics, and uh, orthodontics. So it's the same six subjects you do there. Um, the difference is that in certain subjects, conservatives, maxillofacial, prosthetics, you will have the preclinical stuff that you, you learnt in the first three years. Uh, the, so the preclinical exam, and that is included into the syllabus. So it's like you're lost. It's like covering sort of all aspects of what you've learnt from like third year, second, third year through to the sixth year. Um, they are a way that they're different. I know is that they're marked. Um, see, when we did it, it was still written exams. I know it's changed a bit now. It'll probably be oral exams, so it's a tiny bit different. But still, it was marked up with a commission of examiners. I think usually, obviously, in your previous five years, you go to a professor. That professor's examining you, and that's it. Whatever happens, you get your grade or whatever it is. Here's like a commission of examiners. They'll have your paper. One will mark it. It'll be checked by the others, and then they come to a consensus what your grade is. It. That's how. So that's a big difference. So it's not biased you can't say that oh you know this professor or whatever was it's independent they try to make it that way so that it's non-biased and it's as fair as it can be um they are very squeezed together i don't know i know for, med for dentists it is i know for medics it's a bit different but for us we did all six within i think about a two and a half week period it was like yeah six exams in like 15 16 days I, I, yeah so it's quite stressful you've got an exam probably once every three days or two a week I think that's how it was I think you did yeah well like one on the Friday and one on the Monday one on the Friday and I think that's how it was Monday Friday Monday Friday Monday Friday for three weeks so quite intense that period um, and yeah you for us it was they'd mark in and then upload it to the portal or whatever and obviously if it's oral exam you'd find out there and then but um, and then yeah and then once then that's how it goes and you there's different aspects to it I think it's mainly um, like they have a test portion for you to do, which will test around the subject itself. Um, and then there's like the written questions that you would do as well. And then they can, and then some, in some subjects, there's a practical question like prosthetic dentistry, for example, they'll give you a case. This patient has this, 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 what would you be your treatment plan? That's one part. Then there's a multiple choice section. You do that test. And then you get a written question. So they, they break it up into like three portions. So you're, they're testing around the subject. It's not like, oh, I only got this point of the syllabus. So that's what differentiate, differentiates it, I think, from sort of the first five years of your education. With each exam, uh, they're all doable. They're all um, achievable. Like I said, it, it's just hard work with anything. Um, with like prosthetics, uh, dentistry, you get a clinical case with um, They'll give you a, per a person with, they'll show you like a model, of, like a picture of their mouth um, and like certain teeth are missing and they will show if there's mobility on certain teeth and you just got to make a treatment plan. Give a diagnosis first and make a treatment plan based on what you would do as a dentist. So that's, there's no like right answer kind of thing. It's not like, oh, we're looking for this exact thing. It's like, no, show us what you would do and why you would do it. So you explain like, okay, I would treat this with a bridge or I'd put a denture here and a crown here with the abutment on this tooth and those kind of things. So really like applying your knowledge. It's not just memorizing, I'm memorizing a book and there you go. You're actually applying your knowledge, which is what you're gonna do in real life. So it, it's good because that's exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna have patients they're going to have cases, you're going to look at their mouth, you're going to go, right, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? So that's one aspect of the exam. And then there was um, just a um, written question. You get two or three, three written questions. Um, a ballot is picked, one of the students will pick a ticket up from the bottom uh, of, the, of the hall, that's how it was for us. And then we had three questions, uh, written questions from the syllabus, and then that's how it worked for that one. For conservative dentistry there was a multiple choice question portion and just two written questions from the syllabus um, that was a lot, it's a lot it's one of the more simpler ones and um, it's very to the point to the syllabus there's nothing out to trick you or like oh I've not heard of this it's like the contents there the questions match the content so it's one of the maybe the more lenient ones, I would say as well. Um, it's one of the ones, obviously, conservative is something you'll do a lot of from you start in second year all the way to sixth year. 
your fillings, root canal treatment, etc. It's something you'll do the most of, I think, out of all the disciplines. So it is something that, I don't know, for me anyway, and I found with a lot of my friends, you pick up a lot quicker because you've done so much of it. So when you're learning the content, it's very easy to understand because you can picture it in your mind. So that one wasn't so bad. Periodontology is another one. Again, that one was just written questions from the syllabus. So um, probably the most simplest format. It's more traditional, just like the other exams you'd ever do in the 60 years. And, and they just test you on your knowledge from the syllabus. Again, learn the content, you'll be fine. Um, orthodontics had a clinical case, which was a bit hard because you're a bit less, you haven't got a lot of time. Um, so that's a bit of stress, it's a bit of, stre a bit of stress, I can't lie. And um, then, the, yeah, and then two written questions with it. But the written questions are okay, you're given enough time for it. Again, it's based on the content from the syllabus, but the, I remember the clinical case, they actually didn't give us a lot of time. I feel like we had like 10 minutes. And yeah, it's like, you gotta make decisions. It's like, what is this diagnosis and how am I treating it? And it's, again, similar to prosthetics, but you haven't got the time that maybe you had in that exam. So it's a bit more stress. <laughs> um, so yeah, that one's probably, that was the hard bit of that exam, I would say, definitely. Um, maxillofacial surgery, oral maxillofacial surgery, has a test portion similar to pediatrics. Tests around the syllabus, so from the anesthesia portions to anatomy, to the different diseases, abscesses, um, tumors, etc. I think there's about 45 questions, maybe about, I think, 45 minutes. Um, some are multiple choice, some are open-ended, some require, like, a paragraph of information, some just a line or a word. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got two written questions to do with that as well. Um, that is probably one of the tougher exams, definitely, I think alongside pediatrics because the content is so much. And um, I enjoyed it, it was per for me that was my favorite subject. I, I love the oral surgery side, even now going post-graduation. So for me, I enjoyed studying it, so it wasn't for me, I can't say that it was very, it was hard, of course it was hard, but I enjoyed studying it. So it wasn't, it was something I would pick up the book for and really put a lot of time into because I really could engage with everything. But it is a lot, again, like I was saying with pediatrics, it is a lot of content. So um, yeah, it's definitely one of the, the harder ones there. Um, if you can consume a lot of that content, but then it's just about like giving yourself that time. Pediatrics, <laughs> very, very, very odd. Um, content itself is, is, is there's a lot of content. Um, it's very lengthy and you can't really um, sort of, not re you can reduce it, but there's a lot to consume basically. You, it's very hard to miss stuff out because everything's relevant. Um, you, the first part of the, the exam is the um, uh, multiple choice questions or open-ended question test. And you have to pass that test in order to get on to the well next day I mean, you'll do the and when you do the exam you'll do the multiple choice question part you'll do the written question part and you'll do the practical uh, question which is a clinical case which they uh, will give you but when they're marking the exam if you don't pass the multiple choice question that's the first thing they mark then you can't move on to the next sort of stage and that's where a lot of people tripped up myself included um, and it's a lot of content and they are um, it's, it's tough basically it, it's one of the tough ones they do mark it very um, to the point so it, it's something you need to like know the book inside out basically um, so yeah that was quite tough but it is doable like I said before um, if you give yourself the time for it and start early you'll be fine because you'll be able to go through the content in a good enough time that you can repeat it memorize it learn it understand it so that when you're doing the questions, it's second nature. But if you're trying to like cram it in like two weeks, it, it's, it's not gonna work. I would definitely recommend uh, starting to study uh, from the start. I'd say start with maxillofacial surgery, pediatrics, dentistry. Um, the others, maybe yeah, you can start a bit later, maybe in like, you know, Christmas holidays, January, etc. But those two are the biggest in terms of the content, a lot of content, and they are the hardest exams by, you know, everyone will say, and um, I'd say definitely start with those two early and just get ahead of yourself and just keep going through it. By the time April, May, whenever the first session starts, you'll have a really good grasp of the content then, and it won't be so hard for you. In terms of the pass rate, um, it was, it was pretty hard. I mean, I think majority of the people, yeah, have, have passed with the reset the retake session, because um, you get two allocated retake sessions, 
the one is the free one, one is the paid one in September. So you, yeah, I think with that, I think it is necessary because you can get unlucky. It's very easy to sit here and say, oh no, you can pass all six. You can get, you can have a bad day. Someone, you know, you could be ill on one of those days. You could just have a bad day, you know, things, you forget things and all these things. So it definitely is good that we have those re retake sessions. It takes a bit of pressure off you as well, I think as well, to know that it's not just, I've got this one session and that's it. Um, but yeah, no, definitely the pass rate was pretty much really high, I think. I'm just waiting on uh, my registration uh, in this current moment and you need to register with the GDC uh, when you go back to England and that I'm pretty much done with that at the moment and then when you're done with that you apply for the NHS which is the National Health Service um, and that's when the main dentistry is. Um, majority of patients are going to be on the NHS, it's the main system in England so you've got to apply for that performers list number and that's what we're currently working towards at the moment. The law obviously is until you're GDC registered, you can't touch a patient at all, and um, that's the law. Um, once you are G GDC registered, you are then allowed to work, but you can only work privately. You can't work on the NHS system, but you can start seeing private patients. So yeah, I, I know that I will start to see some private patients now. Basic things, checkups, I think that's what they'll start me off with, is what I've discussed, just so I can get that in, make my system, because uh, the whole system, you have notes, everything you've discussed with the patient, the treatment options, what the patients come in, what their complaints are. You need to log all of this. So it's getting to grips with the system. For your registration, firstly, you, in order to start, you need your diploma. Um, for dentists, I'm speaking here just for dentists, because um, you get that when at your graduation, graduation will be October, November, you'll finish your you know, if you pass all your states the first time, you'll finish in April. If you take to the retake period, you'll be, you know, July or September, whenever you finish. But anyway, the graduation will be in October slash November. At the graduation, they'll give you your diploma, with, which has got your, you know, uh, your name, everything, your registration from the university, signed from the dean, the rector, the minister, the ministry of health, all that. Um, they also give you an EU supplement as well when you go to the student's office on the day, days after the... Graduation will give you a, a transcript of your grades. And that's what you'll take from the university. You then need to start the application with the GDC, just log in online, make an account, pay a fee, I think it was like 90 pounds. They give you a unique set of uh, application forms which give you has your unique reference number on it and your name, so it's pertinent just to you. Uh, it's not like a generic form list that everyone does, it's like very specific to you, so you need to pay and get that. Um, you need to fill that in yourself page three of that application has a character reference uh, that needs to be done by the vice dean so we have two in our university so uh, and with so they need to sign that they also need to sign a new passport size photo of yourself so again you can get that done here or if you go back home or whatever and, and fly back after for graduation you can get it from there uh, so you give that in and they'll do that they'll sign it they'll stamp it and that's another document um, you need to take one letter, it's called a CGS, a Certificate of Good Standing. Um, this is a document that comes from the Bulgarian Dental Association. It's located on uh, Vitosha Boulevard, so very accessible. And it's just a letter to say that you're not registered with the Dental Association here and that they see no reason that you shouldn't be registered in your home country. Again, that's signed. And that's, that's another document. And then uh, finally, you need a, um, oh no, you need the, um, a structured ref reference form. It's just like to, to talk about your English language skills, just to say that you're proficient in, in English language. Again, any professor can sign that. It's a form you can find on the GDC uh, website. Uh, when you're applying, they'll give you, it's a separate form. It's just speaking, reading, listening skills. You need to fill that in and just some evidence. Your, your referee will fill it in for you. So for example, like speaking skills, they wrote that, you know, I had to do a presentation of my patient in sixth year to a commission of uh, professors. So that was on my speaking skills and how I could speak eloquently in English and how that was conducted and those kind of discussions. And that they sign almost just, just to see that you, you know, you're proficient in the language going on. So that's a requirement. And just finally, you need a police check. So you go down to the Ministry of Justice and 
you take your ID with you, your Bulgarian ID, um, and they will use that, your residence permit, and they will use that to make your document, and yeah, then that, that's your documents ready. Um, you need to get those documents translated and make certified translations of those documents. This is where Intex really helps because we didn't have a lot of help with that initially. We were kind of like, oh, we don't know where to go, what needs what. And we came, I remember we came down to the office and your colleagues, uh, they really helped. They sat down with us, spent 20, 30, 40 minutes talking to us what exactly it means to have certification, legalization, notarization, because these are just words to us. But like, we, we don't know what this means or what exactly we need to do. So we broke it all down. And for me, that was great because I didn't, think that they, you guys would offer that kind of service um, because I just thought it was mainly to do with what happened you're looking after you during university and now that you're finished it's like you know we had to do this on our own but it was really nice that, that we had that help there and like I said they were able to help with the translation the certification so that our documents were ready we could pick them up and then we could take that back home and send it off and uh, yeah let's get on your registration. It really does depend on where you're going after your degree. I think for me, obviously, I can only speak for going back home in England. Um, it, maybe the way you treat a patient is different. The system is, is different there, and that's what I'm still learning now because of being a fresh graduate. The way you go about treating a patient, the protocol is um, different there than it is here. It's not the procedures or anything that you've learned is different, it's just maybe the way they look at a patient here and the way they would treat a patient, or at least at university, is very different to the real world. And I think that maybe that's just at university in general. Obviously at university, um, if I'm treating a patient, I always know that there's a professor there to help me in the worst case. And it's like, there's a problem. I sort the problem kind of, it's like a solution based sort of learning. Um, whereas in normal practice, you know, a patient's gonna have an, a, maybe a few problems and you've got to assess what's the most important thing we've got to look at first and that's usually you know the oral hygiene if that's not you know up to scratch you know there's no point doing the 10 fillings they need because it's not going to last i'd say what it feels like going back to the uk after graduating i did used to think it'd be like oh they would look at us maybe less so compared to UK graduates, and I don't find that to be, I didn't find that to be the case at all. Um, for example, I know with one or, two, one or two places where I've looked for jobs and stuff, they have exclusively hired um, dentists from, graduate from Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, all around Eastern Europe. And they say we actually, some even say we prefer some of the graduates who've graduated abroad because you guys have done a lot more experience in terms of work. Um, compared to some of the students here, so we actually like that. So I wouldn't say that I felt any sort of prejudice or anything like that. In fact, I think it's it helped more times than not, and it's nice to sort of meet other people um, who have been in that position, who graduate from Sofia or Plovdiv or, or even another country, and are working fine now and are doing really well there. And they said the transition's not that bad, so I wouldn't say that there was anything like that. The colleagues uh, that I made here and my friends from Bulgaria, um, the ones that are Bulgarian uh, that I made throughout the years, I know that they're working now and, and in, the, in some practices and some in Sofia or some of their hometowns, which is really nice and it's nice to keep in touch with them and, 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 and see how their career is going and, and how it is and how they're transitioning and, and uh, you know, sort of talk about the, you know, remember when, you know, you know, all the reminiscent stories, remember when you were stressing about this and stressing about that kind of thing. So. It's nice and you know, there's some colleagues from you know, Greece and, and, and stuff and I know that they're doing well and, and, and they've gone like, you know, to practices that, you know, some, some that they have, like their family have and stuff and everyone's sort of working and we do share that with each other. You know, for all my friends in England, I know we're all sort of in that same position now, of just finishing off the registration process and sort of being in the job hunt and securing a job now. And I was fortunate to get a lot of friends from Manchester and, and, and just nearby so I, I see them a lot still which is great because I know there's always that of oh we won't really see each other a lot again but I'm sort of fortunate in that sense that 
I live so close to a lot of them that we still see each other and uh, yeah, we're, it's, it's going well. Um, a lot of people are just now looking at different jobs and securing their jobs in the futures and it's just sort of, it's really nice to see where we are compared to where we were because this always used to be that you're always focused on, okay, from first year I'm trying to get into second year, right? Finish second year, I'm just trying to get to third year. You never think of the end goal and what will be at the end, especially when it was graduation, it was a bit surreal feeling to think, you know, we're, we're actually here now, <laughs> like this is this is happening. <laughs> you know, it didn't look like this is happening. You always think, oh, six years, oh, we're in, oh two. like I remember thinking in 2016, oh, I'm graduating 2022, oh, it's going to be so long, will I even make it, what's going to... So it's nice to sort of reminisce about that and see where we are now uh, compared to what we used to dream of being in first year and stuff. And yeah, it's a lot of fun, quite nice. For me, I, I took the summer to sort of take a break from everything because it was very intense and um, <clears throat> I was sort of relocating back home and, you know, dealing with that and um, I thought one and one and one or two holidays as well because you just want to detach. But you can, and I know friends that did look and get their job sorted so when they came back at graduation they are like, yeah, I, I've got something already. Um, not being registered doesn't deter you from getting jobs. You can go and look, but you just have to say to them, look, I'm not GDC registered yet. I'm just starting the process. And if they're fine with that, then uh, some jobs will say, no, we're only looking for people that are already registered, already got their NHS performance, but we need them to start now. Some people will say, no, well, the job is going to start next year in March, for example. So yeah, it's fine, but we'll, you can get a job beforehand. So I use the time just after I finished to relax and take a break from everything and then sort of the month leading up to graduation I then decided to get organised with documents, spoke to my friends, spoke to the year above me who graduated and just get an order of what exactly we need to get and where to get it from so that when graduation itself was finished that we knew exactly where we were going and what to do. My plan moving forward now um, is to hopefully start working soon. Um, and just yeah, get get into the into the job. It's what we've been waiting for uh, for a long time. Obviously, is to to be a dentist. So I'm excited, uh, nervous, all at the same time. Um, really sort of intrigued to see what the next chapter uh, sort of has in store. So you know, we've sort of closed this chapter here in, in Bulgaria and starting this new journey wherever it may be with any of us for me you know being at home and and um, yeah I'm just looking forward to getting started working and uh, yeah seeing what working life brings I will miss being a student though I can't lie being a student it's, it's more relaxed less problems you know what I mean less yeah when you become an adult there's now you're dealing with the working life and you know, paying taxes and bills and all, <laughs> all that stuff and, and that sort of new responsibilities that you're going to end up taking. Um, but I will miss sort of the relaxed life of being a student and sort of still being able to chill and, you know, <laughs> do all the kind of stuff and, 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 you know, not worry about those kind of things. Um, but, you know, it's something I'll hold fondly and keep with me when I move on, so it won't be too bad. Now the next goal is just to get into the field and, and start to see where I can go in terms of that sort of where I want to be and just sort of uh, see where I can take myself. I do like, I've always been that kind of person, I'd like to try different things, be it in, in life and, and uh, it'll be nice to sort of be in a range of uh, opportunities in, in England uh, as well as like there's so many with dentistry there's so much you can go into and that's still what I'm learning there's so many different courses to take so many things you can learn and I'm just so that's my next goal is just to find that thing that in that niche in the field that I really um, feel strongly about and just make it my specialty. This has been a lot of fun to film. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been nice. I hope that anyone who watches this uh, has learned a thing or two from my uh, constant rambling on. But I hope that you've managed to pick up a few things. And um, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity.